first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello and welcome back to Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. Thank you for joining us here. And as you know, on this show, we get to do something pretty unique, and that's take a deeper dive on some of the stories that we cover here with Fox 12 for our regular newscasts, including our investigative stories. And we have Ezra Kaplan joining us here once again. Yeah. Ezra, always nice to have you here uh, you know, on the show to do this and just to go through some of these stories that really you've spent so many hours and hours and hours covering. People have seen them on our other newscasts, but now to just... Uh, take a minute and kind of debrief and talk about it and, yeah. and maybe share some other information. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this one, I, I mean, I'll say, I think a lot of people have been following this just because yeah. it's pretty um, incredible, shocking footage, um, a lot that's happened here. Absolutely. Yeah, this is something that we uh, we first aired, our, we, we did our first story about this on Friday of last week. It was a Friday right before the, uh, the New Year's weekend. And, uh, it, you know, as often happens in the news world, the, the news or the release drops right at the end of the day on a Friday because then everybody can go home and nobody has to answer any questions. And, of course, yeah. that's what happened with this. And so just to back up and give a little bit of background about what the story is that we're covering, a um, couple weeks ago we got a press release in early, mid, about mid-December mid uh, about a death that happened in custody with the Milwaukee police. So a, a man had died in police custody uh, in, with the Milwaukee police. Normal, it, these, these things happen, you know, people die, it, it, but this one stood out be, specifically because it said that the police were transporting him from an emergency room to a behavioral hospital, so which is basically like a psychiatric hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and when I saw that, you know, I was like, that doesn't seem right. Uh, it, and in the initial report said something about an overdose. I was like, why would somebody be overdosing right after leaving an emergency room? And so right from the beginning, we were a little curious. And so we put in some uh, requests for additional information, mm -hmm. as well as we started putting in uh, Freedom of Information Act requests. And that's a, a law, a federal law. There's also a state version of that law that gives journalists, that gives the public, uh, that gives lawyers, that gives all kinds of people, anybody who wants to, to the ability to submit a request for records from federal agencies, I'm sorry, from government agencies. So everybody from the FBI, and, uh, you know, the, the House, uh, well, that's not one of them, but everybody from federal agencies to, to state and local agencies, everybody has to follow these laws. And so we put in the request for the video, and, and what has happened and that where we're at right now with the reporting is that on Friday that video was actually released. And so there's certain statutes that give them a certain amount of time, and it just so happened that that time was up on Friday. And so Friday afternoon we got the video, which was body cam from one of the responding officers. And it was about an hour and 50 minutes long. Um, we had to do a pretty quick turn on it to get it on air. But yeah. what it showed was um, it added some pretty gruesome details to what had actually happened. And, and I think one of the most important things that I took from this video were the circumstances in which uh, Mr. Discamps, Jean Discamps is the, the man who passed away in this story. Um, but the circumstances by which he was discharged from the emergency room. And that's now where our reporting is. Uh, that's kind of the big question is, should he have been discharged? Uh, I think it's pretty clear that the police didn't feel comfortable in their role of taking this man who had been discharged. And so it's kind of been backed up to like, well, should he have been discharged in the, in the first place? And there's a lot of questions now. There's yeah. an official investigation regarding that. Well, I mean, I think just what, what you said right there at the beginning, going from emergency room to a behavioral health right. facility, that seems like, I don't know what that typically is, but it seems like it'd be going the other way around. So, right, sure. You know. And, and, you know, and this does happen, right, where somebody goes into an ER, they're stabilized, they're get, they get past their medical, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the urgency of a life-threatening okay. situation. And then perhaps they are in a place that they're not able to be released out on their own. Perhaps there's a, a judge who has a hold. Perhaps they voluntarily... Um, you know, submitted themselves for a psychiatric hold, and they do need to go and transition to a, a to a psychiatric hospital. Uh, whether again, that's for perhaps they're on a suicide watch or yeah. all, all kinds of different reasons that that can happen. What is a little weird is that a that the police were doing the transporting, right? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes that might be handled by somebody else. Okay. A and the other thing is 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 that the whole point of that system is that they're stabilized before they go, right? The whole point of yeah. the ER 
is to take care of that, that life safety. The right? physical safety. The physical yes, safety. Yeah. Make sure they're in a good place so that when they get to the psychiatric hospital, they can deal with everything else that's going on. Because I'm in that situation, it's going to be complicated. But that, that psychiatric hospital is not designed for what an ER deals with. Gotcha. Well, so we could take a look. So we, we did air a, a story on, uh, so we, we actually did a first story on Friday. We aired another story last night with some more recent updates, and we can, we can take a watch of that. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So uh, we're going to run this, and then we'll come back and, uh, and talk to Ezra some more about this. When police arrived at Providence Hospital on the night of December 12th, they found Jean DeCamps nearly unresponsive, laying on a gurney in the emergency room. Hey, Gene. Hey, Gene, can you hear me? Can you look at me, buddy? The hospital had called Milwaukee police after discharging DeCamps. There's no medical reason for him to be here anymore. Um, and it's all behavioral. Yep, 100% behavioral. Mm. But police were skeptical of whether they were the right ones to be handling the situation. I don't think, I don't think the jail's going to take it. It's not really a medical problem. It's malingering. It's not really a police yeah. problem. Yeah, it's not a police problem either. No, uh, it's not. It's a community problem. The officers made the decision to transport his camps to the Unity Center for Behavioral Health. But when they arrived, they found him unresponsive and without a pulse. They took him out of the car and began CPR. But it was too late. Disc camps had died. In the minutes afterwards, officers could be heard expressing frustration like with it. the situation. Providence, the Milwaukee Prov was saying that as soon as they told him he was being discharged is when they said he started playing possum. We got there, we had my supervisor and three other cops there. We're all going, this is And so the supervisor's like, take him back in the hospital. And they refused him. And he's not verbal, he's not talking, he's got in involuntary, involuntary duel. And they're like, no, nope, there's nothing wrong with him. You guys did everything right. Under federal law, emergency rooms are required to treat and stabilize anyone who needs care regardless of insurance or legal status. The Oregon Health Authority tells us that there is now an investigation underway and that the hospital was notified that it was in an immediate jeopardy situation, which occurs when, quote, a hospital's noncompliance has placed the health and safety of care recipients at risk for serious injury, serious impairment, or death. The investigation has the potential to threaten Providence Milwaukee's ability to receive Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement for services if they are found to be out of compliance and fail to fix the situation. On Friday, Providence Milwaukee said in a statement, in this case, we fell short of our goal of providing safe, reliable, compassionate care to our patient. The Milwaukee police said in a statement, through our initial and ongoing review, we see every indication that our officers were trying to improve Mr. Discamp's situation by getting him additional care and treatment. I mean, they, they uh, use the uh, words uh, medically clear. Uh, He's uh, medically uh, fine. Uh, They're like, it's not medically fine. Yeah. 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 It just pisses me off. That, that guy does not need to be dead right now. And Providence Milwaukee just sent us a new statement regarding the OHA investigation, saying that after Sean's death, they immediately started an internal review and have cooperated with the investigation. They also said that they have implemented a plan that includes reinforcing our existing process for caring for and discharging patients. Meanwhile, Jean's family tells me that they are just devastated. And they feel like they haven't even been able to process the loss of their brother and son. Reporting in studio, Ezra Kaplan, Fox 12. All right, that is uh, some pretty stark footage there, and, and pretty pretty hard to see, you know, yeah. what what went on yeah. there. Um, so, thank you for, for good evening, that. and welcome to the six o'clock news. I'm Peter. If we get this pulled down here. Um, so, so after you know this, we saw that yeah. statement that was yeah. released. You mentioned that there's an investigation that's going to yeah. be going on. Like, what what were kind of the follow up from everybody once this thing was out there? Yeah, I, so right now, uh, right now there is an investigation that's that's ongoing, and so where it stands now is that uh, you know right after about a week after the investigate or a week after the incident, the Oregon Health Authority started an investigation, and what they did was immediately give uh, the status of immediate jeopardy, which means that there's a very serious issue that's actually going to threaten the safety of patients and, and and could result in injury or even death, mm -hmm. and. Um, Providence, Milwaukee, 
basically put together a quick plan to resolve that, to get that removed. But now there's a more ongoing investigation happening by OHA. And why that's important is that this investigation has, uh, let me back up, what they're investigating is whether or not this hospital has violated something called EMSLA, right? And EMSLA, I can't remember what it stands for, but right. it is the law in the United States that says that any emergency room has to provide emergency care as well as labor services for, for folks who are pregnant, but they have to provide that regardless of insurance, regardless of legal status, doesn't matter who you are, if you are a person and you walk into an ER, you are entitled to care, period, end of story. And so the question now is, did they violate that law? And the reason that that's important, and it is such a big deal, is that if this investigation that OHA is carrying out um, finds that they did violate that law, they then send that information to something called CMS, which is the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services. I think services. Anyways, okay. it's the group that basically administers all of Medicare and Medicaid dollars and controls whether or not this is going to go to this hospital. Now, if they're found, found in violation and don't fix that problem, right, they get an opportunity to fix that problem. But if for some reason they were to not fix that problem, that means they're cut off from all Medicare, wow. all Medicaid fund money. That's basically the equivalent of financial ruin for a hospital. And so, as you can imagine, a hospital in this situation is very motivated to get back into compliance, to get yeah. into good standing. And so I, I you know, personally have no doubt that they're going to work to get this resolved because in reality they have to, right, yeah. uh, in order to, to stay functioning. Um, but the, you know, the question now, I guess where it stands now is that this investigation is ongoing. Things have slowed down, right? It kind of was a little bit urgent at the, at the beginning. Now it's going to take some time. These investigations are never as quick, I think, as right. the public would like, but this is the, the, the pace of... of um, Bureaucracy, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah as, uh, as we're familiar with yeah. here. Um, uh, quick quick question just to sure. clarify, too. How long ago was that video taken? I know there's a yeah. statute limitation or statute for when it came out, but yeah, so it was released. Yeah, so it was taken, so December 12th, the night of December 12th into the 13th is when the incident happened. So okay. all that video was okay. recorded uh, on that night. So, um, yeah, and then after, uh, in terms of the, the statute or the, the timelines, uh, it the release... We got the information. I think it was about 14 days. I can't. Yeah. I can't remember the exact number of days, but there's a certain number of days, and they uh, and that was. Uh, they pushed it up to that limit, and then it yes, was out. That's yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then you got it. Um, wow. So yeah, that's that's a lot. As you mentioned, Taylor, too. Just to just to clarify, everybody at home, that was you said over an hour. Of yeah. The the, the the entire footage that they sent us, it's about an hour and 50 minutes or hour so. Hour and 50 minutes. And okay. It started basically. If you watch the video, and I, and I will say. Again, it's very graphic video. You've seen parts of it here. The Milwaukee police actually did post the entire video, the same one that we got, on their own YouTube channel. And so it is out there to see. Again, a uh, strong warning. It is hard to watch. Absolutely. But it starts really as the officers are walking into the ER and go all the way through to the end. And what you heard in the piece there was a little bit of that debrief with, I believe, a healthcare provider at um, Unity Behavioral Center and one of the, the responding officers, and uh, that's kind of where it ended. And so that whole time, I was just about two hours from when the officers arrived to uh, when Mr. Discamps was passed away, and then they had a debrief as well. Um, I was just pulling this up just so I could take a look here. We've got a, a lot of people that are watching this, just some comments that are coming through. It's mostly comments. I'm not seeing a lot of questions, but if you did have yeah, have if questions. Yeah, we've got questions. Um, we've been diving into this. Yeah, lot, yeah, so. feel free to drop those in. Um, yeah, Mark making comments. Uh, Lynn says, I hope this man's family sues that place and shuts it down. So, in, interestingly about the lawsuit, uh, yeah. so that, that law, that federal law, EMSLA, um, it lays out basically three penalties for violating EMSLA. Uh, the first one is financial, right? Uh, strictly financial. There's a set amount of money for, to fine the hospital as well as the, the physician involved uh, for each instance. And I don't have those off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. it's $100,000 or something. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing. The second one is that it puts you in jeopardy with CMS. You could lose your Medicaid and Medicare uh, funding. And, and that's, that's the, the that's, big one. That's right? the big one for the hospital as a business. Yeah. The third one is very clear and that it lays out that the victim or the victim's family has the right to civilly sue the hospital and anybody involved in this. And so that idea of suing the hospital, I, I think, is is I think a lot of people who understand some of the litigious nature of, of the country and right. how justice is served 
this does seem like a situation where there could be a lawsuit. Uh, I have actually, t I've talked to the family, I've asked them about that. They weren't able to confirm whether yeah. or not they were doing anything either way. Um, but, you know, that civil litigation, that seeking damages uh, is written into the penalty for violating, violating this MFLA law. So it's certainly a possibility that they could pursue certainly that. I mean, I would imagine they're still going through a lot of process as well. I mean, at the end of the day, well, they, they, they lost a they lot did. of money, They know? did. And this was, and this was a guy uh, who... You know, I think um, we didn't show it in the video, but uh, we, we have some pictures that we've used in previous reporting uh, about this death. And, you know, it's really hard to watch because it, it, this guy has declined significantly in his health. You know, he, he had a loving family. At one point, he was a big part of that family, but has, you know, declined in terms of his own health to the point where, he, where we found him in the ER in his condition. Um, but they are, they're suffering you know, the loss of, of, of their brother, their son, but they're also, uh, you know, having to deal with a lot of public attention. And yeah. it's not something that they're really enjoying, of course. Um, right. But they, they, you know, they told me that it's, it makes it hard to grieve. It really makes it hard to process because there is so much public attention to this. Um, and they're not necessarily upset about that public attention. In fact, his, his father told one of our reporters that he hopes that this can be a lesson. Yeah, um, and there's hopes that there's something good that can come from this, but at the end of the day, they still lost their loved one. And, yeah, and that's um, and that's hor horrible, no matter what horrible. the circumstances are. Yeah, horrible. yeah, yeah. Well, Ezra, thank you very much. You know, for joining us. Anything else that you think anybody should know about this? Or no, we're, you know, we're, we're going like to stay on. Covered a lot, yeah, but. we're going to stay on this story. We we are looking at. Uh, I think one of the things that that was interesting in there is, and you heard in the package, there's an exchange between one of the officers and some of the healthcare providers where the, the healthcare providers are saying, this isn't a medical problem. The officer mm -hmm. says, well, it's not a police problem. And then somebody else says, it's a community problem. And uh, you know, I've talked to a couple other reporters here, and it does feel like what we see in that ER is a bit of a microcosm of some serious issues within our community, within, within what's going on right. in Portland. And so we are kind of taking the opportunity to say, you know, look, we're gonna dive deeper into the story, but also, what does this story tell us about what's going on in Portland? What, do, what does it tell about the, the holes, the gaps, you know, that people are falling through. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I'm not sure where the, the reporting's going to take us, but we're definitely staying on it. I, I think that's a very good point, just a reflection of a lot of issues that are happening within Absolutely. this community as a whole, I mean, and beyond just here. But, yeah, certainly certainly a lot to figure out there. So thank you, you know, Absolutely. for your reporting, for sharing all definitely. that and going through that. And thanks to everybody who's joining in, too. Again, this is part of what we get to do here. If this is your first time watching, this is called Fox 12 Now. It's our live streaming show where... You know, we get to, it's a little bit more casual than some of our other shows and that we can have a conversation about this and go a little bit deeper into it. And that's why we have these deeper dives with reporters like Ezra joining us and our investigative team. If you see something on our news, though, uh, whether it's on the site or on our news shows, something that you would like to find out more about or you think that would be worthy of a deeper dive or you want to maybe we get the reporter on, feel free to send in an email. Um, that's fox12now at kptv.com, fox12, fox12 now at kptv.com, and I can see if I can make that happen. And then also just to, to bring this up as well for investigative pieces, which I know you're always, we've got the team, they're always working on something, um, but certainly I know that tips from the community Absolutely. as a whole is pretty important. And Absolutely. We are always, always looking for tips. Head over to the website, and uh, you can fill out a form there. We get all the tips. We look at all the tips. We try to respond to as many as possible. Um, and there's a lot going on that we could not know unless somebody like you let us know. So Yeah, so no, those will be seen if you absolutely. send those in. So those absolutely will be looked at. So feel free to do that as well. Um, that's it for right now. If you want to follow up with this story, we do have, of course, the reporting at kptv.com for the Fox 12 Oregon website. And thank you for joining us. Uh, for Fox 12 Now, we'll probably sign off for the day. Unless there's breaking news, you can come right back here to where we're at. Otherwise, our 4 p.m. news will take over as usual. So thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.